this morning I'm gonna try this Madagascar Centella Hyalo Sika Blue Serum that came in my, was it Yesterday or Stalvana calendar? About that much. Ew. Has a little bit of a scent to it. Fruity scent. Kool-Aid. I think there were some fruit extracts in it. It definitely smells fruity. This has centella in it, which is helpful for healing. It has antioxidants. On this channel, I talk a lot about hard water. Hard water has calcium ions in it. They interact with the detergents and like your body washes, your cleansers, your shampoos. And first of all, they make it harder for them to lather, so you end up using more. Then they form a film on the skin that's very disruptive to the skin barrier. Plus the calcium ions in the hard water may interfere with calcium signaling in the epidermis further leading to dryness, irritation. If you live somewhere with hard water, like I do, and I know a lot of you guys, especially in the UK, because you told me that, be really conservative with how much body wash or cleanser you're using, because I'm telling you, forms that film on the skin. It's not, it's not really cleansing well. It's aggravating your skin barrier, making you more prone to irritation and dryness. All right, sunscreen today. I'm coming in with a Hotalabo, <laughs> said that really fast, the Hotalabo UV white gel. Goes on really smooth. Let's see if it pills though over this serum. It doesn't seem like it is. Well, hey guys, I'm on my way out to run errands. I just finished filming a video for you guys on barrier creams. This time of year in particular, they can be rather useful, but year round for those of you who risk, who risk, who work in high risk occupations for occupational dermatitis, namely hand dermatitis, like hairdressers, healthcare workers, a barrier cream can really help with all the frequent hand washing and exposure to, oh, who, just, who just tried to contact me? Frequent exposure to irritants and chemicals that erode at the skin barrier. You know, your hands, they really do, they really do get put through the mill, regardless of what you do for work in terms of your occupation. I mean, they're always exposed to things. The backs of the hands, the skin there is pretty thin. We're always watching them. I always say here a fire truck. One of the things I've noticed about living here is that people do not pull over when an ambulance or fire truck is coming by. I just think that is, I mean, we're all at a light right now, but everywhere I've ever lived before, it's just like common knowledge that when an ambulance or whatever is coming by, everybody just pulls over. Not here, I have never seen anyone do that. Like I do it and I'm always like, I get honked at. Like I seem to recall, though it's been a long time since I learned how to drive, I seem to recall like that you could potentially get a fine for not pulling over for ambulance or, you know, fire, fire truck or whatever. But then again, like how are they gonna enforce that here? I mean, you would think with like the, the license plate tagging kind of thing, you know, like if you run a red light, a lot of, red lights have those sensors and they take a picture of your of your um, license, pe uh, license plate and then they mail you a fine. I feel like I see so much stuff that could be fined that the city could make millions. Like I see people litter here so freely, it's insane. Um, I've never seen people openly litter with like seemingly no shame to it as I do here. Let me know if that's if you've noticed that too if you live here like people will think th this is something I see all the time that I've never seen people do elsewhere and I'm not saying it never happens elsewhere but it happens like a lot like I see this daily if not multiple times a day people on their lunch break will eat lunch in their car fast food or whatever whatever and just open the door and put the trash on the ground like in plain sight, no shame whatsoever. That should be fine, right? Littering, because it attracts pests, roaches, rats. It's disgusting. I don't understand. Um, you know, I get it sometimes people are, I, I don't understand. If you want to, if, you, if you're too lazy to take it to a trash can, then leave it in your car and you know deal with it yourself why i don't know i i don't understand it oh how sweet are these the little ceramic tree but it was a gnome hat that's adorable carver has a lot of little gnome decor merry and bright these would be cute for someone's desk 
$4.79. I like that. These are pretty nice decorations. Kroger does not disappoint. Here's the elf. I like these LED terrariums. Pretty easy to kind of DIY though. $2.39 for gift wrap. Y'all, I don't know what's going on. I'm not seeing any Tuscany holiday candles. And I'm worried they're not gonna come out with them this year. They always do. And I love the mint chocolate. It's so good. The peppermint candy cane. But I'm not seeing new candles. See, here we have gift wrap. But I'm not seeing any of the holiday candles this year. I may have to go to Ron Dolls, that newer brand that I discovered. Cute mugs. Cookie decorating stuff. But no candles. All right, it's K-Beauty Advent Calendar time. We're cracking into day three and day four. I'm gonna start again with the Yes Style calendar. With day three, looks like we got, ooh, Moonshot. Performance Lip Blur Fixing Tint. Yeah. Okay, so I like the packaging, it's cute. I like that it stands up like that, but has this sort of almost tube-like shape. Um, that's the color. There's the color. The shade is Bang. The shade is Bang. Unfortunately, this has fragrance. So that's day three. I look forward to seeing how that looks on. And then day four is, ooh, this looks like a biggie one. Oh, my favorite, Pyeong Kung Yule. I feel like last year we had a black tea Pyeong Kung Yule eye cream. This year we have eye patches. Last year we got eye patches from Causer X, I think. Yeah, the snail eye patches, which I really like. Um, what is in this? Ceramides, hyaluronic acid, chondrus crispus, licorice root, fermented black tea. Check out how pretty the packaging is. I'm gonna open the jar so we can see what they look like. Of course you get a scoop. Oh, they're black. You get a ton in there. Kind of like the Derma E ones you get a lot. I love these. I, I The ones from Derma E. I haven't tried the Pyong Kong Yule ones, but I'm looking forward to giving these a go. Um, Cool. I love doing these. They're very hydrating and they just kind of help minimize fine lines temporarily, brighten things up a bit. All right, so Yes Style redeemed themselves today. Uh, we got full size products, which I've been spoiled by the Yes Style calendar in the years past because it always it's always been so good. Let's move down to Style Von on day three. Okay, what do we have here? Looks like. We included some bubble wrap in there, okay. Ooh, Etude, Etude House Fixing Tint. What is this? Hydrating tint that stains less on your mask with a lightweight matte finish. Sounds like something you can use as like a lip and cheek stain for a little bit of blush. Oh, there we go. Okay, that wasn't obvious for some reason. It's a doe foot. All right. Definitely intrigued to give this a try along with that uh, blush from yesterday. And day four, what do we have? Ooh, Cause RX. I love Cause RX. Say what you will about it being a brand that is just K-beauty but not actually something that Koreans use, it's made for Americans. I still love a ton of their products. This is the Propolis Honey Overnight Mask. Um, I think I've tried this in the past and I actually liked it. Unfortunately, Propolis, you know, if you're allergic to fragrance, you pretty much, you gotta be really careful. Propolis often will cross react, but it is pretty hydrating. But I will point out CauseRx, one of my favorite, CauseRx has a ton of good, great products. That's why I'm like, people will always like roll their eyes when I shout out CauseRx, cause it's not like a real Korean brand. But I'm telling you, some of my favorite products are CauseRx. Like the snail stuff, I love. 
And the overnight rice mask is a holy grail for me. It's, it's one of my top skincare products. I discovered it many years ago. It's just like a really nice, the, the rice mask, it's like a very nice um, moisturizer and it really does, it, it really is good, just trust me. I can't, I can't think right now, but yeah. All right, cool, another full size win. So stay tuned for the vlogs next weekend on Saturday and Sunday. We'll have more doors to open because seven days will have elapsed <laughs> um, as opposed to just the first four days of the month. But yeah, really love opening this with you guys and this one's a good one. Well, hey guys, I just finished my skincare routine up into uh, moisturizing solely with the May Love Fade Away Brightening Serum. Uh, I just reordered actually another bottle because I'm about to finish this one up as I mentioned yesterday. And I'm doing these new Pyeong Kang Yul Black Tea Time Reverse Eye Patches. So far, so good. I've had them on for a long time because I did a little TikTok and then I had you guys here and I realized you didn't have a battery, so I had to change that. I always do that. Um, so they've been on there for a while. Um, does it give you any information? Probably on the box, but I just slapped them on there. So far, so good. I'm gonna come in with my tread now and these are kind of cool in that they, um, keep me from putting tretinoin too close to my under eye area, which can be super duper irritating. Uh, speaking of irritating, do, do not use hydrogen peroxide on your skin. I know this is a popular remedy that you were probably taught, um, you know, I was taught to do that as a child. Like if you get a cut, it's actually not very good for your skin. Oops. Hydrogen peroxide is pretty caustic and it denatures the proteins in the skin barrier, making you prone to barrier impairment wherever you put it. But if you put it on a, like a cut or whatever in the hopes of disinfecting it, it really slows down healing significantly. And when you, in terms of a cut, all you really have to do is wash it out with a little soapy water and that's it. Uh, unless you're immunocompromised or you know, you're diabetic and we're talking about a cut on your foot, then you know you need to be a, a lot more cautious. But for just run-of-the-mill cuts and scrapes, don't put this on your skin. It, it's just irritating. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't do what you think it does. It's 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 actually pretty harmful to. It, it's it's like taking several steps back. Like you get a cut, and your body immediately the first step of wound healing is in inflammation comes in to clean everything up. You put this on there, and it's like, like a hit in the face. It, it doesn't, it doesn't do what you think it does. Um, yeah, so <laughs> there, there's a no go. Likewise, Neosporin, if you're new here, I do not recommend using Neosporin. It's petrolatum, which is great for a cut, but it also has these antibiotics that are just not that great. But uh, the rate of contact dermatitis to those antibiotics is actually pretty high, like the likelihood of developing an allergy. People put that stuff on willy nilly, like you know, and there is a risk of my, uh, my antibiotic resistance just using it. You don't need that. And studies nicely show that the outcome in terms of improvement of the way that the skin looks and healing and recovery is the same uh, compared to petrolatum, just like plain Vaseline or whatever. But people who use Neosporin have a higher rate of adverse effects from irritation or contact dermatitis, you know, contact dermatitis. So. Don't even get me started. I, I, I find the prior authorization process for getting medications approved through insurance, it's actually a huge hindrance to quality care, 100%. There are a lot of bad outcomes, like we're talking serious harm as a result of the delays due to insurance companies requiring us to go through all of these hoops of writing these prior authorizations and denying or whatever. It's a, it's a delay in care. Um, yeah, not good. They, they have too much control, those, the health insurance companies. Um, uh, they have way too much control. It's, it's unfortunate. Um, coming in with this hydrating styling cream, this has been a favorite because I don't do well with most of these kind of products, especially they tend to be too heavy on my hair. But what I do is I just take two pumps and put it in my hair. 
obviously. You guys are like, duh, we didn't think you put it on your feet. <laughs> you never know with me. I mean, it smells nice. Uh, work it in, and then I take this comb, and I just comb it through. Having shorter hair is a lot more high maintenance than long hair. It's it's a lot, it's intense. <laughs> because when I wake up, I'm like, whoa, what is going on? Like I need to actually fix my hair. Um, so that's why I've been experimenting with a lot more hair care and like styling my hair, because I have to. With long hair, it's a lot easier, at least for my hair and the way that it, the texture and everything, when it does, because it's thick and so it has a tendency to take on a life of its own. Uh, so it, all that to say, like, that's why you're seeing me doing more stuff like using this Revlon tool that I shared with you guys last weekend. I've actually really been liking this, but I only use that a couple of times a week. I only use it on my hair when it's completely dry. I don't actually use it to dry my hair. I, just, I always um, get all, like, 95% of the water is out of my hair right now. It's just damp. Um, and then I'll let it air dry the rest of the way um, while I finish working on the computer. And by the time I go to bed, it's completely dry. I just do like this. One of these hair claw clamps that I've had for going on two years. Shout out to Lisa Lisa D1 for recommending those because they are durable. Like they hold a lot of hair and they don't break. Um, I don't want to jinx myself, but I've had them for a long time. Like, if this broke today, I'd be happy with my purchase because I've been using it that long. All right, I've been keeping you guys on the edge of your seat with these um, under eye patches. I put them this way because um, it didn't come with, it didn't tell you which way to put them. Some of these eye patches want you to do it the other way, where the fat part is on the inside so that the majority of it gets like the under eye area, and others tell you to do it this way. And so I, I don't, honestly, it's, to me, it's like up to you, the user, which way you do it, because it's like, do you want more hydration out here? Or, you know, do you want to cover a greater surface area in here or out there? I mean, it's not like anybody's going to come and arrest you if you do it the other way around. I mean, I'm not. I, well, I don't have the ability to arrest anyone because I'm not a police officer, in case you didn't know. Um, but uh, all that to say, I chose to do it this way. Now, these are nice. But I actually prefer the Derma E ones because, I don't know, maybe it's just a texture thing. These are a little, these are not as juicy. I like a really juicy one. These are not bad. These are nice. These would be cool to do on a plane. But I like a juicy hydrogel eye mask. And the Derma E ones, they have like a, you know, those, what are those, are they, they're not technically candy. I guess they are. Those, um, they sell them at a lot of Asian grocery stores. It's like this little plastic pod filled with lychee flavored um, jelly. And I think it's made out of agar. Maybe it's got gelatin in it. It's been years and years since I've seen them or had them. And you pop a little top off and you pop it back. That's what the, that suctiony sensation is probably like an ASMR thing. That's how the Derma E ones are. Their under eye masks are really good. They sell out a lot. These are nice. I will definitely make my way through them. I enjoy doing them. And I do think it brightened up the under eye area while I'm blabbing on and on. Um, but um, yeah, I like the German E ones. They're juicier. But coming back to those little pods, did I dream this up? I feel like those were a problem because there were kids who were popping the top off and shooting them back. And they were getting lodged in their airway, like going down their, their windpipe and they were choking on them and is that was that just an urban legend let me know but i remember liking them we didn't have like an asian grocery store where i grew up um so i didn't discover them until like i was in high school and i, I stayed a summer with a family doing i was doing a ballet summer intensive and i stayed with a family and they had them and I was like, these are cool. And I, I feel like that was the only time, maybe one other time I have ever have had them. So I'm not sure if they have, if they have gelatin or auger in them. Gelatin's not vegan. So if they do, um, that ship has sailed for me then. Anyway, <laughs> I'm wrapping this video up. 
loving the hydrogel eye masks. We're already in, you guys. We're in December and we are in, we're in the trenches already of the Korean beauty calendars, which are not disappointing at all. Speaking of Korean beauty cal calendars, this whole year, you guys, in this corner in my bathroom, my main tripod surface is the K-Beauty Advent Calendar from YesStyle from last year. I've kept it. Um, I reuse and repurpose a lot of the stuff that gets sent to me, even products I don't like. I find ways to use them, you know, if they're open and I can't give them away or donate them. I'm always, I'm always, you know, I don't like to waste stuff. Waste not want not. Anyway, blah, 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 blah. I'm wrapping this video up. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.